Everybody say amen. Repeat the topic with me, please. Say building a disciplined future before time runs out. Our theme is discipline this month. And this is part of, as I said, a series we've been doing all year. And we're answering one question. Now, the reason I, I do that is because you can't say you don't know what I'm talking about. You can say he's talking about building a future the whole year. And he's showing me how to build a future. In the first month, I told you you build a future by changing the way you think, right? And we did a whole month on how you think and how that affects your future. And then the second month, we talked about changing your approach. But you already know this, right? And I told you that your approach has to change when your thinking changes. But your approach can't change until your thinking changes. And then the next month, we talked about the importance of having clear convictions. Because once your mind changes, once your approach changes, you tend to come to clear convictions. These are things that work. And these are things that don't work. As you age, that's true, too. You don't do certain things because you just know it doesn't work. You're really clear about that. And once you come to those clear convictions, they become passionate. You become passionate about those things. Clean the house up now. If you don't, it's going to stay junky. Let's put, hang it up when you take it off. And that becomes a conviction. That's not just, you know, you're not just being disciplined. You just understand that if I put Monday's thing on the floor and Tuesday's thing's on the floor, and third, before you know it, the whole week's on the floor. And so it's just better to hang it up when you take it off. And so you change the way you think, you change your approach, you change, you, you, be, you develop clear convictions, and you become passionate. And once you become passionate, then you become disciplined. And discipline is about really having been trained. And, and I put a little note for you in your notes there. I said, you must discipline and train before you lose all you've gained. <laughs> Come on, say with me. Come on. You must discipline and train before you lose all you've gained. And that's what the word discipline really means. It basically has to do with being trained in a consistent way to do one thing. And the goal is to help you get to a particular place. That's why you discipline yourself. Now, so this is a word I didn't really like most of my life. And if you ask me, am I disciplined, I'd probably say, no, I'm desperate. It's my normal response. I'm desperate not to do that again. I'm desperate not to be in that place again. And so there's a way I interact with people. There's a way I try to interact with my relationships because I just want certain results. Now, in this month, um, one of the things we're going to talk about is time discipline. And that's our focus today. And there are four specific disciplines I'll talk about this month. So repeat them with me, please. Come on, say time discipline. Time discipline. A mom's discipline. A mom's discipline. Now, that's, that's for Mother's Day. That's next week. And I got some great stuff. I'm going to talk about a mama's toolbox. Stuff that you want to put in your toolbox, mama. And I'll give you a hint. It's Proverbs 31. Read ahead and guess what I'm going to say. But you're not going to guess anything I'm going to say. Because it's really a powerful teaching that talks about women and, 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 and mothers, but both women and mothers. And it's really an empowering message for women, an empowering message that will help men understand women. So if you've got a woman in your life you don't understand, please come next week. <laughs> I will help you <laughs> figure her out. Bring all the brothers you know. So I'm going to ask my whole, my, all my brothers going to come. Everybody's going to show up next week. <laughs> then we're going to talk about spiritual discipline. Say that with me, please. Come on. There's something about that habit that I have. I have a really strong um, list of spiritual disciplines in my life, and they help me, and I'll talk about those. As a matter of fact, I really want to do an expanded series on this because I really think a lot of people, they're asking God to do things that are impossible to be done in a carnal life. The word carnal means fleshly life, someone who lives by the whims of the flesh, whims of your emotions. There, there are some things that will never be possible. You will never have certain friends. You will never have certain relationships, certain, certain opportunities because of the way you approach life. And you do not have the right disciplines, spiritually especially. And then lastly, thinking disciplines. It's all about how you think. And it's not, it, this is a, a, a little bit of a twist on what I've talked about before, but we'll talk about those four this month. Now, I want to um, ask you one big question for today. And this one big question kind of um, is something I want you to think about all week long. Are you using your time in a way 
that will bring the best results into your future. Just think about it for a second. If I looked at how I'm spending my time, am I using my time in a way that will bring the best results for my future? How much time do I have to build the best future for myself? If I really think about it, how much time do I have to build the best future for my life? Well, believe it or not, we all have the same amount of time. And I'm going to show you two guys in the Bible who talked about time. One is Paul and one is Moses. Paul made a statement that's well known. It's in Ephesians 5, 15. And it's one of those verses you tend to go to when you say, what does the Bible say about time? You know, we use it. King James says, redeem the time for the days are evil. This is that verse. But what I gave you was another version because it kind of makes it more, I don't know, modern, the way he says it in the Weymouth New Testament. Therefore, here's what it says in verse 15, Ephesians 5, be careful how you live and act. Be careful how you live and act. Let it not be as unwise men, but as a wise. Be wise. Don't look like unwise people. Here's the kick part. Here's the, kick part. Here's the punchline. Buy up your opportunities. Redeem the time for the days of evil. Same, same concept. But here, I love the way the modern version says it. Buy up all your opportunities. Take advantage of every opportunity, for these are evil times. Every opportunity you have in front of you, buy it up, use it up, make sure you get the most out of it. And so the question is, how, how do we do that? Well, Moses, he picks up on this conversation in, in Psalms 90, which is one of the Psalms that is attributed to Moses. And Moses says this, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. So Moses and Paul both say, watch your time. So I thought it would be interesting to look at how we spend our time. And so let me talk about how much time we have each year, and then you can kind of see where you stand. First of all, in a year, we have 7,865,080.82 hours a year. And we all have that. That's a gift. Secondly, look at how many seconds you have, 31,556,952 seconds. And you have 365 days. So everybody has that gift. The question is, what do we do with it? Now, this is fascinating to me. First of all, we spend five hours a day of that time in front of a television on average. All you got to do is come home, watch the news, and then watch another show. And before you know it, and then get up in the morning and do the same thing. Watch an hour or two before you go to work. You have watched, without knowing it, five hours a day. Five hours a day. It's almost a work day just with television. And television is, the, is still at the top of the charts in terms of how we spend our time. It wins. It wins over iPhones. It wins over, not just iPhones, but it wins over phones. It wins over, over devices. It's amazing. How much time do we spend on our phones? Well, we spend 23 days a year on a phone. 23 days a year. It's amazing. 552 hours a year, or we spend 10.6 hours a week on a phone. You want to know how long that is? Just sit in one spot for 10 hours. That's how long. And just hold it up there like that. 10 hours. And it's, it's amazing. That's almost two days of work on a phone every day, every, every week. Now, how much time do we spend in front of a device? So 168 hours a week, okay, that's what you got, in a week. We spend 50 of those hours on devices. 50 of those hours on devices. Amazing. We spend about 40 of those hours working. We spend about 49 of those hours sleeping. We spend about 21, 21 of those hours, you know, cleaning and personal care stuff. And we have about eight hours left for everything else. That's a lot of time. If people are spending 50 hours a week with media for entertainment purposes, then there's really no time left for anything else. And there's the article. You can, you can download the notes, and you can go. If you're home, you can just click on the link, and it take you to the article. But I want you to see how easy it is for a person to spend a ton of their time. Now, you know, it's not until you get to a retirement age, when you look at your time, that you really start seeing how you spent your time. So what I want to do is I want to jump in here, and I want to ask... Um, a retired person, if I can. Um, how many of you are retired? Raise your hand. 
you're retired. Raise your hand. Let me see you. Go on, fine. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the mics, guys, would you? And, and, and uh, I want to, um, if you, I want, here's the question I want you to ask for, answer for me. What did you learn about your time once you retired? What did you learn? That you, now, this, you've got to be a retired person, not retiring. Okay? You are retired. You have retired. Now, you may have gone back to work or whatever. It doesn't matter. I just want to know that you retired. What did you learn about time? Raise your hand. Who will tell me? I learned this about my time once I retired. Something you didn't know when you were working. Right here. Raise your hand. Raise your hand high so they can find you. Anybody else? Who's going to help? Is somebody going to help me? Any guy? Any guy that's retired will help me? What did you learn? Okay. Um, okay. Where are you? Right here. Yes. The day goes very fast. When you get up in the morning, if you don't have a scheduled time or something to do, the day gets away from you. So what did you learn when you were, when you were working every day? What's the difference? Did you, did you look, how do you look back at how you spent your time when you were working? I was more disciplined. You know, you had to get up and leave work at a certain time. Mm -hmm. I like to be early, so I was early. Now my daughters tease me because I have cat days where I do absolutely only what I want to do. How does that feel to do what you want to do? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you have more control of your life? Did you, do you look back and feel that you had less control of your life than you realized? Working every day, I having think, to be someplace? So. Hold the mic, hold the mic. I think so. That yeah. um, when you're working, you know, you know what's expected of you, so you're continuously doing that. Mm -hmm. It's like being home every day. I said, I don't know how I have to clean this floor like every day when you were working. I don't remember doing it, but I think you just didn't think about it. You just did it. <laughs> But now I'm home thinking about it. I'm like, the floor is dirty again. No. <laughs> Before you just walk over the floor, let it be dirty. <laughs> so, yeah, I said, somebody else. Somebody else. Wait, where are you? Raise your hand so I can see. Where, who has the mic? Right here, Cliff? Who has the mic? Okay, anybody over here? Okay, right there. Thank you. Okay, I see you in the back. Yes. What did you learn about your time since you've been retired? My time. It wasn't my time. I'm doing stuff for everybody else. You know, since I retired, you know, they know you retired. Yeah, how about do this for me? Uh, uh, go here for me, you know. So uh, a lot of <laughs> <my> time. <laughs> but so, when, you, when you look back at working, did, did you, do you realize how much time you didn't have? Did you discover that you had, you were, you were really kind of like committed to this more than you knew you were? Okay, when I was working, now I knew I had to get up in the morning. I knew where I had to, where I had to be. Mm -hmm. But... When a, you know, after I retire, it was like, um, mm -hmm. I think I want to go here. I think I'm going to do this. It, it was my call, you know. So now you could do what you wanted to do, what you want to do. Pretty well. Pretty well, time. unless they're bugging you, right? <laughs> yeah. Pass the mic to him real quick. Yes. I found that I give more of my time away free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> That's good. No, that's, that's really good. I can't say anything of that, but good. That's good stuff, yeah. What, yeah. When I was working, I was programmed, and now I have more time to do what I want to do, and I don't have to rush to do the different things in my life. So you were programmed. You were more controlled your time. In the back, yes. Yes, I worked at the uh, post office, and I really felt like... Let's a have a moment of silence. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> good people at the post I, office. I go felt ahead. Like a, I felt like a robot most of the time because my hands were doing the same thing all night long, over and over and over. But my husband says I haven't retired, but I have because now I can... I work, I, but I've created a creative space in my home, and I create, mm -hmm. but I work diligently at creating and I set a schedule and a time, but it's, it's not the same kind of work. Right. So. I told them that I'm going to have a meeting of all retired people, and we're going to get together and talk about retirement. Um, right. Yes, where are you? Yes. Um, when I retired, I don't consider retired, but once I retired... Hold the mic tight. Once I retired, I volunteered 20 years at St. Joseph Hospital, and I am a person that goes to the gym. I'm a gym person. I go to the gym five days a week. 
I do the gym three days. I oh, do water geez. aerobics two days a week. Let me tighten up. So Let me tighten up. Let me tighten up. Let me tighten up. Let me suck it in here a little bit. <laughs> Put me under I, pressure. I am a person that really take care of my health, and we eat pretty healthy, too. Even though we go to old timers on Sundays, but I still eat. Hold we still, on. You go to old timers on Sunday. You go to old timers on Sunday. Today's the day, to, right? Yeah, today is the day. But well, we still yeah. try to eat pretty healthy. Let, and, let me ask this question. I have a great retirement life. I thank God for it, because I'm very happy, and I got peace in God. So I thank That's right. God for that. I got one more, and then I got to stop, okay? Two, okay, two more. I'm, I'm going to stop after you two. That's it now. Where else? That's it? Okay, good. Who else has one? That's it? Okay, good. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Go ahead, sir. In the back. Yes. Um, usually, usually when you're younger, you always work to get to a certain money level. But what you learn is when you retire, no matter how much money you have, the clock is still going. It's still going. You're still losing time. No matter how much money you make, you just have more time to spend your money, but... <laughs> and uh, spend too much of being careful, I guess. Yeah, somebody else back here? Yes, Mr. Sharon. The thing I like about it is I have my own time. I uh, control my time. It's, it's certain things you have a project. When I was working, I couldn't finish my job because I'm working overtime to get things done, and I neglect what I really want to do. So now I feel at peace because I can do what I want to do and com complete the task I, w I got before me, and it feels real good. I mean... People said, shop man, you look real good. I said, yeah, I'm relaxed now. I ain't but stressed out. You know, <laughs> I'm not stressed out like it was before. I think it's really amazing. I think that's everybody, right? Good. What's really amazing is last night when I asked a question in our Saturday service, one of the comments that really touched me was, I did not know how much I'd given my life away. I did not realize how much of my life was owned by a schedule that someone else set for me. And for the first time in my life, I'm now thinking about me, just me. I get up in the morning and I think about me. Now, I, I think you can do that along the way. I don't think you have to wait to retirement to do that. I think you can retire along the way. Because it's really funny. When I ask people about me in retirement, what they always say, I say, well, I've been doing this job for 35 years. Uh, am I close to retirement? And everybody says, see, no. See, I don't get a Yes. <laughs> And, and I, I'm not. I feel very good. I'm healthy and strong. I feel like I can go for many more years. But, but one of the, that day will come. And what I don't want to do is wait until I get to retirement to gain control of my life. I call it retiring along the way. Can you say that with me, please? Come on. Retiring along the way. Which means you take three days here. You take four days here. You take a week here. You take the time off that they give you to be off and be off. Don't be the super employee who never takes the time off. I don't allow that on my staff. I want them to take their vacations. I want them to take time off because I don't want them coming in one day and, and looking all cross-eyed and saying I'm crazy. I'd rather you rest along the way, take breaks along the way. As a pastor, I don't, go to, I don't come here seven days a week. Every day, every Monday is what day? Diane. Diane's day. That's right. Talk about it, people. Why did I name it that way? Let me give you a little secret. Don't tell anybody. Raise your right hand. Come on. This is why I named Put your hand up. I want to see you. Don't tell nobody this, okay? I, <laughs> that way, if you try to get me on Monday, because I can't, because of Diane, you know how she is. <laughs> Diane. <laughs> I had to give it a name. I, I, and somebody said this about the other day. I was really touched. I was in a meeting in Phoenix. Name things, and it tends to have power when you name it. For example, if I get $1,000 and I say, well, this $500 is savings, that's the name of it can't get it. I, and then this $200 is for, when you assign, give money an assignment, when you say this day is for Diane, it's assigned to her. Now, you may, can't do that, but you can say, okay, Friday after four is, is Susan's time or Bob's time. You can create a time. You can look at each week's schedule and assign a time. I go to the gym three days a week. I work out. This is when I stretch. This is when I exercise. You, you set a time. And just like you make an appointment, and pretend it's an appointment for something that's incredibly important. If I do this, if I designate this time for the next four months, I'll feel tough. I felt, look, when you were talking, I tightened up. You saw me, I got more muscles when I was just talking. This, you know, you, you assign your life. Some of you have no real schedule. You'll make an appointment to talk to a client, but you won't make an appointment to talk to yourself. You'll make an appointment for a new, new, new job opportunity. You'll fly great distances to, to advance your business, but you won't walk across the street with, to get an ice cream with your wife. 
See, at some point you have to pause and say, let me reassign my time in my life. And so let me back up a little bit, give you a couple of things Moses said and I'll let you go home. Moses was big on time. And in Psalms 90, he talks about it. And there were four or five things he said that I thought were really insightful. First of all, he said, God is the beginner of time. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever, you formed the earth and the world. You formed everything. Everything that's here, you started. You're the beginner of all of this. Moses was clear about that. Number two, Moses saw God as the one who lives outside of time. I love the way he says this. And this is part of a New Testament quote you might recognize. For a thousand years is in your sight are but as yesterday. And you heard the New Testament says, right, a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. In other words, God doesn't live within time like we do. He lives outside of time. And so when he manages and guides us, he's not guiding us from a place where he's trying to figure it out along the way. He knows. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night for all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. It's like, whew, before you know it, it's gone. You know, something that's really interesting. When you're younger and you look forward, it looks, time looks different than when you're older and look back. So when I was um, raising my children, I felt every day homework. Those, those poster boards they used to always forget. You've been there, you know what I'm talking about, right? They tell you Sunday night. I got to turn in a poster on the morrow. What, what time is it? It's 6 o'clock. Okay, well, the store's about to close. I can't get it. Well, why didn't you tell me Saturday? We've been walking around. We were in the store Saturday, walking around, bought you a couple of toys. Why didn't you say something? I forgot. You forgot. So then we stay up to 2 in the morning. You've been there, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get this done. And then they walk in with their big old poster board all proud on Monday. And you by tired, can't see because you got to go to work. And they said, we did a good job. Yes, I did do a good job helping you <laughs> late at night. I got so mad, I bought about 20 of them. I, bought, I just bought some poster boards and kept them down. I found some the other day. I found they threw them away. <laughs> They're 34 and 29. I don't need them now, praise God. I think I threw them away. I mean, you just, you know, but I felt every day. But when they were out of the house, it was like a win. It looks different when I look back. Young people, you understand that. You know, when you look back at middle school or elementary school, you can see that wasn't too long ago when you look back. And that's an interesting way that God sees time. He sees time above it all. And when he guides us, he understands that we are limited. Moses made a comment about time that people often misunderstand in verse 10 of Psalm 90. He said, the years of our life are 70 are, are even by reason of strength 80. Now, people often read that and they think, well, that, that's how long you're supposed to live. That's how, that's how many years God promised you. No, Moses is just talking. And he says, hey, you know, I see people, they live about 70 to 80 years, kind of just estimating. But Moses himself lived 120 years. So that's no way a prophetic statement about how long I'm going to live. As a matter of fact, there's a lady, her name is Jeannie Louise Comet. She was born in 1875, died in 1997. She died at 122 years old. She is my model. Listen to what she said. She said she had a great appetite, loved sweets, ate two pounds of chocolate a week, <laughs> turned, treated her skin with olive oil, and rode a bike until she was 100. That's my model right there. That's what I'm talking about. I like this lady. Come on, I like her. She... And so I, I, I think that, you know, we can... I'm not, I'm not trying to in any way say that you're out of time. I did do something. I did cheat. I said, well, okay, Temple, if you live to 80, how many more years do you have left? Whoa, it's 21. I thought, count. I said, hey. So I, that's why I looked at that lady up out there and encouraged me in Jesus' name. <laughs> I, said, I said, I think I want to live a little bit longer. Moses, again, in verse 12, talked about this numbering of days that he was a man who paid attention to the numbering of days that we may get a heart of wisdom. There's something about understanding where I am on the clock and being mature about that. 
And then number five, Moses saw being happy every day as a priority. I love the way he says this in verse 14. Satisfy me in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our what? Days. But I love the way he balances this. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. In the midst of that, he's not afraid to talk about challenges. And he goes on and says that, and as for many years as we have seen evil, there are going to be evil we see, there's going to be afflictions, there's going to be a challenge, and he understood that. And that's part of being a mature person. So there are questions I want you to think about this week, and I'm going to leave you with these. These are a few questions. How has your use of time worked so far? The way you've managed your life, your time, are you accomplishing your goals? And if I'm honest, I didn't always use it well. I'm, I'm guilty of this five-hour stuff. I probably had some 10-hour days in front of a TV. I've had moments. I'm not much of a TV guy now, but I, I in my history, I've, I've done a lot of things to waste time. But I don't know that I'm, this is an argument ab about you having to make sure you micromanage every second. I think there's a, there's a value in just doing nothing. I have days when I do nothing. I have days when I, I mean, there's nothing like showering when you don't have to go anywhere. You can stand there and waste water. It's just wonderful. <laughs> there are days when you've got no place to go, no, nothing to do. You know, you just go to the movies and you just pick one. And I don't know if you ever, I do double headers sometimes. If I want to catch up, you know, Diane's not for that all the time. But every now and then I said, I want to see two. So I go sit there and then jump and wiggle. I'm not good at horror movies because I threw my popcorn up one time. That was bad. <laughs> and I, I think everybody in the theater knew me and they laughed me to scorn. It was horrible. I threw, I threw it up in the air. So whenever we, in a movie, and it gets a little bit, little bit scared, Diane leaned over and touched me. She said, all right, now, calm down. <laughs> Don't embarrass us today. <laughs> Don't, you, Don't, you, Don't you kick your legs <laughs> But there's nothing, there's nothing like having some time you waste. But I'm not just talking about having a day of rest. If I look at my life, am I investing my time in things that cannot possibly get me to the goals I'm trying to reach? And if I'm not careful, I'll make it God's issue. I'll make this a God issue. That, that I'm not accomplishing things because God didn't do something for me. Is that really even fair? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, sometimes I think people, when they, when they do that, they don't think about it. Say your name out loud. Mark. 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 That's your name. Mark. Say your whole name. Mark Mosley. Mark Mosley. Now watch this. Now, now this is important because if I were to say this prayer, <clears throat> Lord, I want you to help me to clean my garage. I believe by faith that you're, that you're going to help me this year get my garage straight. You're going to help me get in shape. You're going to help me get to the gym. Switch words. Mark, you're going to help me clean my garage this year. You're going to help me get in shape. You're going to help my bank account grow. I believe Mark's going to bless me. I believe Mark's going to. Now, you would say, no, that, that don't make sense. <laughs> That's not fair to blame Mark when I have not allotted time to clean my garage. That's not Mark's fault. But what we do in our prayer life sometimes, we blame God. And he looks at you and says, well, could it be a discipline issue? Could this be that you have not set aside time to even go stand in your garage? <laughs> this, is not, this is not a God issue. All I got to do is change the names and you get it. Mark, why do I have a bad wife? Why did you let me have a bad wife? Where's my money, Mark? <laughs> Mark said, you got a problem, Pastor Rick. <laughs> Something wrong with Pastor today. He off. How then can I blame God when I have had no discipline? And I'm not willing to change. Here's the next question. Here's the question. What can you change in your schedule that could change your life? If you change your schedule, you might can clean out your garage. If I, if, I, if I really and truly mean this, and this is what I think is so, so, so sad, we're not, we're not willing, we want, our future, we want our future to be different, but we don't want to change anything to make it different. 
And until you discipline your time, until Ricky Temple says, listen, I cannot spend time doing that. And, and sometimes I bother, bothers people. I'm, I like people. If you've been around me, you know I'm a people. I really do. I mean, I've come to your house, take my shoes off. I'm that kind of guy. But there are moments when I can't be on every board. I can't sign up for every charity. Because if I do, it will not get me to the goals I have set. And then I'll blame Mark. And Mark will say, something's wrong with me. Do you think God's any different? He's at least as smart as Mark is. <laughs> You're sitting here blaming me for your bad relationships, but you keep choosing people in a hurry. You meet somebody, you're in love in five minutes, and then you're rolling around in, in eight, and now you're wondering, what in the world? I'm sorry. You, you know, and now you're wondering, why in the world am I in this mess again? It's because you keep making the same decisions over and over and over again, and so there's no way to bless you. The Lord really has helped me. I have to slow down and deal with my life. I have to deal with my church, with, with my family. I have to make sure that I'm not ripping and running. What can you do to change? What can you change in your schedule that could change your life? And then the last question for today. What will you lose if you don't change? What will you lose if you don't change the way you are managing and using your time? What will happen to you physically if you don't go to the gym? What will happen to you? What will, what, what will your future be like? And I want, you to, I want you to pause and think about this. If you don't, I don't care if you don't go to the gym, just do something. What will happen if you don't change? What, 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 let me give you a couple of prophetic words. You ready? If churches don't change the way they view church, it's already declining in a lot of places. If you don't change and open your heart to those who are watching from home, if we don't create online membership, if we don't, you know, oh, no, they've got to always come. They're not going to come. We want them to come, but they're not going to always come. We have to create ways, apps, opportunities. We have to understand the world's changing. And if you struggle with that, and if you get on your horse and buggy and insist that people ride with you on your horse and your buggy, and you don't want to ever get in a car or a boat or a train, you think that this is the only way it has to be. You are determined that you will never, ever do email. I am never an email person. I'm a mailbox person. Well, you are going to be behind. There, there, there's no way to run. You're going to have to take your life and say, I have to change the way I'm living my life. And, it, and here's what happens if I don't. I will lose. Amen. Let me show you how that sounds. Ready? Say, I, I will, will lose. lose. Doesn't that sound awesome? Yeah. Who wants to attach that word to themselves? But some are already losing. Some are losing, and I, I just don't, I, if, if we don't pause now and change and embrace this series, there will not be a future. I'll give you a hint to where I'm taking you. Next year, I want to talk about bigger, better, but we'll never get to bigger and better. We'll never get to a place where our lives can be, can be what and, and this is so important. Something I never imagined. Unto him that's able to do abundantly above all that I can ask or think. And that's not about, listen to me, that's not about stuff. There's some of you, like me, you have a nice car. There's some of you, you got a nice suit. There's some of you, you have a good job. But your life's not great. If, if, all, if stuff was the goal, celebrities would have it made. Right now, we're having this class war that started. Our politicians are creating this incredible climate. Just shoot all the people with money. And then if you're not careful, the people with money are not caring about the people with no money. People with health care, if you're not careful, you won't care about people with no health care. You start class wars. And all this stuff that we're creating does something amazing. It makes people have this fantasy idea that it's all about advancement and stuff. And it's not. All you got to do is get a few things that you dream of having. And all you can do in the car you dream of is drive it. 
I agree, it feels good to drive it. But all you can do is go from A to B. That's all you can do. And so here's what I want you to do today. I want you to get your mind beyond stuff. I want you to look at your life, and I want you to ask yourself, if I continue to use my time the way I'm using it now, where will I be in five years? If I continue down this path, Father, I pray that what we've talked about today has helped people think about time. I pray that they would say, I I get it. Maybe I have lost my way and I've begun to invest myself in things that have nothing to do with where I'm trying to go. Our family is so busy. When we get home, we just come in the house run to our different spots in the house. We don't even hardly know each other. There are no planned getaways. Gatherings mean very little. Maybe that's why we fight so much, because we don't know each other. When we do talk, we're arguing. We're correcting each other. Why didn't you put this away? Who made this house a mess? Instead of saying hello. We spend all of our time in strife. And Father, I pray for, for people, God, who, who in such debt that they, they can't even breathe. And they got to spend all their time trying to pay Visa off and trying to pay American Express off and trying to pay some bill off and some furniture, some TV they went and rented and paid four times the price for it. May they take it back and listen to a radio in Jesus' name free themselves from these bondages free themselves from all these obligations I pray God in Jesus name lift your hand up would you please prosper your people give them their life back give them their time back give them time to be together I'm not against hard work and sacrifice but Lord sometimes we've lost sight of balance and there's just no time I pray you prosper your people. But not with just money. Give them their time back. Help them take a moment to step back and rethink their life. The kids are at 18 with sports and the parents are on five jobs. What kind of house is this? Is this what we're working for? So God, I ask you now in Jesus' name, would you just worship God for a moment, church? Would you just speak praise? Let me, let me hear you. Just, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I, I worship you. I honor you. I redeem our family. Redeem our life. Restore us. Bring peace, healing, focus. I pray for the college student who's so busy, they have time to study. They would, they would calm down and say, no, I have to spend these hours going over this material. I pray in Jesus' name. Somebody said, Pastor Ray, I, I don't have, I, I can't, I can't, I can't stop. Yes, you can. Let me show you. Look right, look, look. There you go. 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 Right there. Right there. Stop right now, right? There you go. Say, can you get up? Yeah, I can get up. Don't wait till you till you're stopped. I do funerals, I'm telling you, man, they're amazing. I do too many a year. I don't know how many I've done. Ten this year already, a bunch of them. Last month within three or something like that. And every time I walk by, I pause. Some of the stories I know, and they touch me. Man. 
Some of the stories I can't tell, but some I know. She was so in love, but she wouldn't stop. So a tragic circumstance stopped her. He was so in love. He worked so hard. So hard to retire and never got there. And then I see people line up and they walk. And it's, you know, it's, it's that moment, you know, they walk by. And they just, you know, don't know what to say. Is that going to be you? And then here's what's interesting. It's all over with. They want me to say something really helpful. And they say I do a good job. They say my sermons and funerals are the best ones. That's what they tell me. And when it's over with, and they leave, and we cry, and we go to the gravesite, and I say dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and I say my little speech, then they all get in the car, and they go eat. think about that. You get a half of a page, a couple of paragraphs about your whole life. Why don't you just stop while you can before the end comes? Why don't you just stop this now? Pull this family over on the side of the road. Regain your life. You can do this you can change this direction. It does not have to end this way. When I lay down, here's what I want y'all to do. When it's my time, I want y'all to sit me up like this. <laughs> that's, that's what I want y'all. ain't going to do that, are you? <laughs> Mark, you got to talk to him, man. Listen, listen. Listen, I'm the pastor of the church. I'm telling y'all what to do. Sit me up. Because I want you to say he lived a good life. <laughs> Come on, amen. He lived a good life. Praise God. He was happy. <laughs> so y'all say, I know I'm not coming. You're home going, buddy. Did, he, did they set him up? They set him up. I ain't going now. They're going to be checking before he go. My wife done told me that ain't going to happen. But uh, anyway. Father, we thank you for all that we've said today. We leave this place clear about the importance of disciplining our time and redeeming the time, taking our time and making the most of it, seizing every opportunity to make sure life is what it's supposed to be. Not full of bondage, not full of sorrow, not full of grief, but full of joy. There are challenging moments. We know that. And we're not afraid of a challenge. But we believe that you want us to not create the challenge but not properly disciplining our time and so we give you the glory and the honor everybody say Amen. every head body right close father i pray for anyone in this room today who would say jesus i've never really given my life to you i've never taken the time i've never really devoted myself to a few minutes of thought about